Welcome, welcome back, everyone, to another colorful episode of Come On Now, the podcast. How you guys have been following us, and we are getting a lot sharper, a lot more entertaining. We are ready to blast off. I am your illustrious host slash moderator, Don. Not to get it confused with Don King, my hair is a lot more lavish. You won't know that right now because I have a hat on. Shout out to Disney. Mickey Mouse, I, I'm a Disney pass holder. We're not going to talk about that right now. Um, and I'm done. I'm going to kick it off to my co-conspirators <laughs> slash co-hosts of the show to introduce ourselves before we dive in. Guys, floor is yours. Hey, it's Nick Taylor, man, once again, baby. Three-time Great Cup champion, former NFL player, arena football, like I said, CFL ch- champion. Um Division one basketball player, so I know a little bit about that. So when I do speak it, no, I'm coming from a place of being there, doing it, done that. Not an amateur when I come to basketball, football, um, and everything else. I'm just, you know, I'm here, you know, we like to talk sports. And we're back for another week of Come On Now. My name is Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I am Dana White's best friend. That's right. I am the MMA expert, Rudy Rodriguez Shomai. That's how I need to introduce myself going here on out, because I have been proclaimed an expert by yours truly, Dana White of the UFC. And I'm in a good damn mood, because the Miami Heat just beat the Boston Celtics in game two. Oh, my God. What I'm ready. The Let's go. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. With that being said, we're going to just dive right into the association, guys. I'm going to exit stage left because I haven't been keeping up with the basketball. You guys dive right in. All things NBA playoffs. Man, it's been fun so far, man. Um, all the home teams have basically held home court advantage until yesterday. And then yesterday came upon and then came upon us and we got Indiana finally. Broke, broke through, and then we had, um, well, who was the other team that broke through? Oh, and then we, and Dallas, Dallas broke through. And Dallas broke through. And then today we just had the Miami Heat break through. Wow, we had Joel, Joel Embiid hobbling at 25%. He can't be more than 25% out there. He's giving it his all against uh, the New York Knicks. But they blew a lead. We have the Lakers up 20 late night. I, I I literally was in my bed that night. I said, hey, I'm going to go to sleep. But then I'm like, nah, I'm not going to go to sleep because I got a feeling. Did I not text you? I said I, the Nuggets were going to come back and win this game. I, I said, I, 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 rolled over to my, I rolled over to my fiance. I said, babe, I feel like if I if I go to sleep right now, I'm going to miss a thrill. Like, They're up 20. I said, I don't I, – I just don't feel confident about it. I feel like I'm going to wake up and I'm going to see hella messages. So I'm just going to stay up a little bit and watch this thriller, watch this game. And it turned out to be a thriller. Jamal Murray drives right. And for the God's sake of me, why are we not on his right hand? He's a right-handed shooter who shoots from the right pocket of his shoulder. So he likes to shoot going right. He does the drive, pop, stop, pop step back to his right all the time. That's his bread and butter move. You don't let a person beat you on their bread and butter move. If you beat me, you beat me doing something that you're not usually doing. And I'll shake your hand after that and say, hey, good shot. But when you beat me doing something that you are known to do, that's your move, that's just bad game planning and not knowing the scout report. Because if I can see it, and I don't get paid to scout report, then y'all should know when he goes to his right side, that's his strong point, especially a fading away going that way. He's dynamic doing it. And y'all let it happen again. And then the biggest point of that game, they, they're up. Joker comes down the court, and he's about to turn the ball over. He's out of control. I don't know what the hell he was thinking. He's out of control for the first time you see Joker doing something that's not smart or intelligent. He throws the ball away, and Aaron Gordon makes the play of the game. I don't care what nobody say. That was the play of the game right there. He snatches the ball from Austin Reeves. He's stronger, more physical. He gets the ball. He kicks it out to Michael Porter, 
who's going through so much shit right now, and he's been shooting the ball better than he's shot all season. Don't, I mean, he's a good shooter, but right now he's shooting about 50% from the three-point line. Everything he puts up is going in, and that was the play of the game to me. I don't care what happened before that, what happened after that. That was the play of the game because the Lakers would have got possession of the ball. It's not like the Lakers played bad down the stretch. Denver didn't miss. They didn't miss his fucking shot. Rudy, they didn't miss a shot down the stretch. Uh, 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 were you sleeping? No, I was. No, not. no, seriously, were you sleeping? Because you were, you weren't responding when I was texting the play by play. I thought you went to sleep. No, I had my phone to the they side. They didn't make a. They could. They made one three the last twenty two minutes of the game. Yeah, but and that it was, was that Porter three on that miracle save by Gordon, and that was the first three they had hit since the 10 or 8-minute mark of the third quarter. They were mm-hmm. missing wide-open threes. They did an old-school comeback, twos. Yeah. It was two after two, and then they get the two, and then LeBron hits back-to-back threes and, and a two and pushes it back to an eight or nine, uh, and then they go, I mean, and they're back with twos and twos. Anthony Davis didn't score in the fourth quarter. I don't, think, he, I don't think he didn't score the final 19 minutes. He, he pulled a Dame Lillard. You no, know, he, oh, he had 35 at halftime and then didn't, do, didn't score a point in the second half. Yeah. It, he, he was dominant in the first half, didn't score pretty much at all in the second half. LeBron did everything he could. I'm actually giving LeBron credit. I mean, he, he hit some huge shots to, yeah. to keep them ahead. Yeah. Uh, and and <clears throat> here's a free throw, but here's some big stuff. But, you know, then of course, LeBron. Pushes off on he he pushed off. I mean, I think him. KCP embellished the the push because uh, he landed like thirty six feet in the in the bleachers. But it wasn't that. I, no, he I got no. He completely extended his arm. It, it was a it was and a, then a, and then LeBron a, couldn't. A, no, bro, he a, completely extended his arm all the way out. He's still six nine two seventy and and KCP's two hundred and ten pounds. Agree to disagree, huh? Agree what? to disagree. But it, you go watch it. It was on video. It was like when the, it was like Michael Jordan when he pushed off on Byron. He, he it was a push off. He, he still pushed him off. Not like Michael Jordan. And you know, no, actually, he's bigger. He's stronger. And he missed a wide. He was so shocked that he flew that far that he missed a wide open three. He, had he, made, he was going to hold it for the. Well, for, he, he missed a wide open three with 13 seconds. Um, I I don't. I thought maybe they thought that Jamal Murray was going to drive to the rim, and then he decided to k- kick to the corner. <laughs> Bro, I told you they were going to blow that game. I had a feeling they'd blow that game, and they did exactly that. They Man, blew dude. that game, and that series that series is over. It's not. It's so, over. You know that they, series, I don't want. No, no. The no. Nuggets played like trash and won. They, the Lakers, the played, Lakers played 26 minutes of almost perfect basketball. They, they were played, 20. They played the best three quarters that they possibly could play. D Lo went from D no D no show D goes to twenty your plus. I don't know. Yeah, twenty three, twenty two, twenty four, something like that. Goes to your ass on the bench to D let it fly, and he's knocking down the shot. He had seven threes. He's being the third guy, the third fiddle that they need. He scores twenty three points, and you're like, hey, that's what we need. But the Lakers, they got the I, best version of him. How come well, better could they get? Why the, is the why Nuggets, is Anthony da- why is Anthony Davis not in the post? He was dominating in the post in the first half. He was killing. He was killing. Killing Joker. Joker. They but flipped. They, they flipped Gordon. So Gordon's smaller. Yeah, you telling me that you can't better. go in the he post could, on Gordon? He could hold his ground a little bit better. He's shorter. Then, than Joker. I, on on the defense end. On the defense end. He can jump higher. He ends up a little I, bit more I, agile. I, I thought, he can, you know. He's strong. He is strong, though. Anthony Davis was playing by the three-point line after, from about the midway of the third quarter all the way to the end, playing by the three-point line. And but the Lakers didn't. Oh, oh. Like the Lakers didn't hit baskets down the stretch. Just Denver never missed. They, they went, missed all their threes. They Every went, time they shot a three, it bounced in and out, and they Rudy, missed a bunch think, of those. I think they scored the last six or seven possessions. Of yeah. The game. Well, yeah. It was and it was everything was a two or a free throw except for one three. Uh, and one was in there. They got an and one a Joker. Uh, uh, a Joker okay. went old well, he, school, big yeah, man. He was so every put, time he was giving, he was making barbecue chicken. Every time, yeah, every time AD used pressure against him, he used the pressure that AD used against him, and it's fun. Incredible. And gave him the so 
We talking about like that, that series is over. Would you agree that series is over? Um, they say that the series don't start until oh, a team, a team, a team beats another team on their home court. But I say that's bullshit. I don't agree with that's that. That's bullshit. Thing. The series is over, man. That's, a dumb, that's the dumbest fucking saying in history, though. I don't give a fuck. You can't blow games. a 20. If the, if the Heat, look, I think the Heat series, we're still going to lose. I still think the Heat are going to lose the series. So Rudy, I'm happy to not get swept. When people say that, I don't I don't agree with that saying. It's corny. It's corny. They garbage. play the games. Yeah, you play yeah, games. Yeah, well, like, so it, it, I'm happy we won tonight as a Heat fan. I will say the series <laughs> is over because the Lakers didn't play, play well. well. They played the best, and the Nuggets didn't play well, and they still <laughs> won the game. Jamal so, Murray had six points going into the fourth quarter. No matter <laughs> no matter what the situation is, the Nuggets think they could beat them, and that's the oh, yeah. problem. The and that's the, that and now even more so. The Nuggets hit eight threes. The whole game. Murray, I mean, Porter hit six. <laughs> Joker hit two. And Murray was, was a, Murray was building houses from three. But you have to like what he did. He's like, fuck it. I'm no, not hitting from there. Well, I agree. I'll get to my mid-range game, and I'll find a way to get some buckets. I'll get no, some layups he, and things of that nature. I'm going to get it rolling. The last six minutes, he was freaking Phenomenal. great. He was great. Phenomenal. But the look like the Lakers were scared. It looked like nobody wanted to guard they, him. Did you see that. the look on Anthony Davis's face at the end, like towards the last two or three minutes? Yeah, two, I think the last, after they tied the game at 95, there was a look on yeah. Anthony Davis' face of like, this happening again. I can't believe this shit. And you can happened. see in his face, he was done. The he was emotionally like after LeBron missed the three, nobody looked like, oh, I got him. Everybody just ran back on defense and ran away from Murray until LeBron was like, Well, I guess I got him. And uh-huh. then they did a the little pick at the at the top. And then D Lo was like, Hell no, I don't got him. And then A D was like, Well, I guess I got him. Nobody wanted him. Nobody so, stepped over the screen. Nobody said, hey, I got this. It wasn't like it was a hard screen at the top of the key. They just passed off, passed off, passed off for AD. So before we get yelled at, let's, 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 okay, Lakers suck. We know this. Um, <laughs> you can throw your LeBron hat away. Um, let's talk about the Timberwolves. Because you picked the Suns in that I series. Picked, I picked and the now, Suns. And now you've adjusted yourself after game one because Rudy Gobert, who was unplayable, in the playoffs, yep. I guess is playable in the yep. playoffs. Yep. And they're beating the Suns' ass. Yep. Yep. So, all right. I did change my pick. I did say Minnesota will win this series. I changed it. I totally flip flop. I flip fucking flop. Because I, I honestly think the Phoenix Suns were better with Chris Paul. After watching this series the first couple games and seeing they have no point guard, nobody to exploit Rudy. You told me that, okay. Nobody to nobody to exploit Rudy Gobert in the pick and roll situation and make logical sense passes or get the ball to the right person. I think they had they had two dynamic scores, and they went and got Bill. You got three. So I think a lot of teams have been overthinking themselves and they just think, oh, we need to build a team with with stars, stars, stars. But if your stars don't match, then you won't win. Like if they're all just doing the same fucking thing. They're all ISO scores. They don't pass the ball around like that and things in that nature. So they play against a great defensive team like the, the Timberwolves, who have a big man who's just seven foot tall and he gets to stand in the paint and you can't isolate him off pick and rolls and get switches and take advantage of him. That's a fucking problem. That's why the fucking Minnesota Timberwolves are locking up on defense there. They got Matt Daniels fucking locking up KD Booker. You got Anthony Edwards, even though he didn't score last game, the thing about him that makes him great, he's taking the fucking, he's taking the fucking stride of saying, I'm a defender in this league. And a lot of superstars don't do that. They ask for other players. But he wants to be great, so he's guarding the best players. And he's fucking good at it. And when your superstar is doing that, you can win games. So they win that series. You're going to have a Nuggets T-Wolves round two. Well, so hold on now. That series is over. The Suns can't hold on now. I told you Bradley Beal was not the right fit. I don't trust Brad Beal. He's not a point guard. He's a shooting guard. He's a hybrid, and he's not a good point guard. Yeah, uh, you and, have and to build your team. Like, he, 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 everybody know their role. Aaron Gordon know what the, he's doing. The Suns are a train wreck. The Saints. Yeah. The, you have two shooting guards. Booker is not a small forward. He's six five. He's a shooting guard, and he's playing small forward. 
um, or Beal's playing. I don't even know what they're playing anymore because I don't think – I didn't trust Brad Beal, um, and it shows what's going on. Kevin Durant's getting old too, man. He's 35 years old, 34 years old. He's getting older. And, you know, I don't know that he has the same regiment that uh, LeBron has of, of trainers and eating healthy and – I mean, his and, game and, and, needs to translate because he shoots because he's but, tall. It's not yeah. like he's slowing past people. It's, it's more of a mid-range, pull up, get to the spot type of thing in that nature. But, but he has no point man, No point guard. They don't have a point no guard. No point guard. Last year they had a point guard. I don't think – and they they took this Nuggets to six games. It wasn't like it was mm-hmm. a blowout this No. They, they had need a point a, guard. They got the ball to put They had a point guard. And, and KD and let them do their thing but, and sat back in the weeds and, you know, did his own thing. But I think trading Chris Paul for Bradley Bill, it looks good on paper, but in the real dynamics of the world of playing five on five basketball, not one on one basketball, I don't think that was a great thing for them to do. It, it just wasn't. It does. It doesn't match, man. It, so it, the the Philadelphia Seventy Sixers have oh, a yeah. four point lead with what less than a minute to go. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, it's. But Brunson, who can't hit the side of the barn right now, um, he's. Be- I think they're doing a great job defensively on him. I mean, U- Ubre has made it real hard on him because he's long and he's just staying up in his up in his pocket. When I see him out there, um, it was eight for twenty nine, but he hits that three from the wing, the corner that bounces up, tap bounces in. They turn the ball over. Yes, they're gonna cry and say there was a foul. I don't feel bad for them because that was the same type of foul. Just that mid court that they committed on Hero in the play in game <laughs> pushed him. They pushed him square back court, and it wasn't called. So I don't feel sorry for them. Um, I think Nick Nurse completely shit the bed. Basketball IQ in that game went to absolute hell. Kyle Lowry was inbounding the ball. Kyle Lowry's a point guard. He needs to know better. You call timeout. It's not even, you're not even touching the ball because you saw when DiVincenzo made the three, they didn't even touch the ball. They call timeout immediately and walk to the sideline. What the hell Kyle Lowry was thinking as a point guard and supposed to be an intelligent one. He tried to speed, get it in. For what? For what? No need to do it. No need to do that. You call timeout, go to half court, and instead they're going to cry and say that he got fouled. Yeah, he got bumped twice. Uh, Nick Nurse, it looked like he called the timeouts when they didn't have the ball. I think there was one still (laughs) shot where it was a split second where maybe his fingertips were on it. I, it, th- there was a loose ball. I you agree. can't call timeout on a loose ball. I agree. You fucked up, Nick Nurse. Your team wow. fucked up. It Lowry was- blew it. He blew it. And then, you know, you didn't get the offense. You didn't get the rebound on the miss, the first miss from DiVincenzo. He was ice cold, got the ball right back. Boom. It was a double bang from Mike Breen. And um, the it Knicks was- are now up 2 it was- 0. Those half hearted timeouts. Yeah. They weren't real timeouts. You, they you, you sprint your ass on the court and call timeout. You, know, you try to get out there to press conference and say, <clears throat> yeah, I called a timeout twice. He was like, he so, was like, let me see what happens. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, like but by that point, it was a loose ball. It was a loose ball both times. I don't you know. You want to say that he got pushed? I mean, yeah, it's yeah, the, it's it's the gonna, playoffs. So, so that's why. Deal, I'm getting, deal with it. So that's what I'm getting to with these NBA players and people who were just a couple of weeks ago where when UConn played um, Iowa and they had the big call and everybody was in the uproar online. You can't make that call at the end of the game. So when, when can we make these calls now? Like LeBron was just on there. He's complaining about referees now. He was just on there saying, you can't make that call. And now he, fl- he flat, he flat out it, fouled Jamal yeah. Murray as soon as he got the ball. So when it works for you, you want the call. But when it's in the other favor of other people going on, they should let them play. That's how all fans are. So that's that's how all players are. And everything. That's how all players are. Players and fans are alike. It goes for you, it works. If it doesn't go for you, it doesn't work. Exactly. So I'm, I'm trying to understand. So when should the referees let them play? And when should the referees not let them play? Because according to y'all, that should be okay with uh, with, with uh, Maxi getting held and, and, and hold and and not being able to get the ball and get hit across his face and punch and things of that nature because it's the end of the game. All no holes bar. WWE back in the days, no holes bar. Uh, Al Farouk and and, 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 and it and wasn't a, even that bad. But it yeah. wasn't even that bad. 
It, so it wasn't that bad. I've seen so much worse that like that wasn't even that bad. No, you have to be. Smart. It was marginal. You have to it was the ball. You have to. You have to make sure we get the ball in to the right person. You have to make sure that somebody's not hurt <clears> over him. We got to make sure it's a real clean pass and well. And when we don't do that, that's what it's going to be all chaos. Just you call, time call out. a timeout. Why call not time call out. a timeout? Advance the ball, and now you can throw the ball in the backcourt. You have so much more space to throw the ball to. After the, after the game, Joel Embiid was crying like a baby and about the calls and how he, I can't believe it. Blah. You know, look, I feel I feel bad for Joel Embiid because the guy is perpetually hurt. But man, he lets everyone know he's hurt. Yeah, it gets a little bit old. I mean, he had thirty five, I think, yeah. and thirty four. They both had a monster game. Huh? How you want to try to not hobble? He's hurt. He's no, hurt. I get it, but it, at a certain point, it's not the hobbling. It's the re, it's the it's the non. It's the nonstop. I gotta bend over, and I'm grim- he grimaces when he breathes. At he's this point, Rudy, he's it doesn't fu- hurt to breathe. He's fucked up, except for when that ball gets in his hand on offense. Yeah, he's then all of a sudden he's okay. So I, I don't like whenever he has to do anything that doesn't involve shooting the ball, he's hurt. When he, he shoots the move. ball, he's not hurt. He can't and I, move. Oh, and I know he can't move, and I and I, and he should, I don't even think he should be playing. I think they're risking no, his I, career for this. I, no, I don't. The doctor probably told him he can't really do nothing much to it, more to it. But you know that, know that, know that, you know that I put that up to. I say that's because of Maxi, man. I think Maxi attitude and the love he has for Maxi. He like, I'll go out there and give it all for Maxi. Well, they combined for sixty. They, I think it was, I think it was Harden and Ben Simmons. He'll say, "Fuck that." I'm well, not. They, they'd have no chance. They would get blown. go, but I think because of Maxi, he's like, man, I'll give it a chance, man. I'll try to ride out for you. He's still dropping thirty five points. I just would. I just, it's just the histrionics with everything with him. It's I, I you know I'm a Joel Embiid fan. I said he's yeah. I think he's the best player in basketball when he's healthy. Um, but he's just it's just so much the dramatics all the time. It just it grows old and stale, and it's just like bro, just play, man. I, I mean, if you're gonna have really? a, a reaction every time you shoot the ball, all I gotta say is all I gotta I, say is this to finish that, that before, one, up. huh? He did that before the injury. Oh so. no, he's always done that. He he he's looks like he's permanently constipated on the court. Um. Well. Tobias Harris over me? Yeah. T- that guy has to be the worst contract that Philadelphia ever signed. Every time he the is playoffs- absolutely useless. When Tobias play- Harris. When the playoffs come around, it's like. He is a disappearing act every a- year. Smooth game. I love his game. Nice, smooth shot. It looks <clears> pretty. <throat> you know, it's just like a model. But when you get around her, you're like, damn. She's got five layers of makeup on. But she's so fine. God damn, why she don't have a boyfriend? And then she come over to your house and she's fucking annoying. And you're like, ah, that's why. <laughs> that's Tobias Harris because everything looks fucking pretty on the outside. But then on that inside, it's like, he, had ten, he had 10 in game two, uh, four of 11 shooting. He's supposed to be the ultimate and third he had player. Seven in game, he had seven in game one. He's supposed to be the ultimate third player on the team because he knows his role and he's a third guy. And then every year it comes down to this time of the year, and we start believing in Tobias <clears throat> Harris again. He pulls the wool over our eyes. Oh, I don't believe in him. You may believe in him. I don't believe yeah. in him. I told all. you he's a pretty model outside that I that you like. Oh damn, she gotta have a man. Fuck. So we got one more, and I, we gotta talk about it. The Miami Heat <laughs> just pulled off the upset over the Boston Celtics, one eleven, one hundred one in Boston. You. Look, I said the Heat would lose in, in a sweep. I'm happy to be wrong. I hope we can win a game. on. I'll be at the game on Saturday. I hope we can win that game. Wow, what an even game we played. Kendrick Perkins has no idea because we played per- very, very well tonight. We shot exceptionally well from three because we didn't shoot well from two. We shot 33% from two, <laughs> 55% from three, hit 23 threes, made a complete adjustment defensively, and made the Boston Celtics make twos. They still had 12 threes, but they had 22 threes in game one. Big difference. And Christophe Porzingis was basically rendered ineffective. Drew Holiday was ineffective. We we withstood a Jalen Brown onslaught, which typically never happens. You know that. And Tatum had 28 as well. So you had 61 between the two, but no one else really got up. Derek White was pretty much only at 13, even though he's five for eight. I think they had but 12 my, off the bench. And they had 12 off the bench. Tyler Hero goes for 24 and 14. Efficient. Bam. He hits some monster shots in the fourth quarter. That Amen. is the guy. Holy. Like, this is the guy where you're sitting here saying, catch it. 
and shoot it. Don't think go. about it. Just go. I, there was a, I mean, Jaime Hawkins had 14. Caleb Martin, welcome back, Caleb Martin. The Boston Celtics killer. A 21-point game, five of six from three. High Smith. High Smith had nine, three of five from three. Now, look, we played as well. I, I mean, we made some major adjustments. I'm sure there will be adjustments the other way. But, and I'm not going to sit here and say I've been convinced and suckered like I got suckered last they, year. They're getting you, Rudy. They're but getting you. I will tell you this. If the Heat can win game three at home, and that's a big if because the Heat can't win games at home. They're 500 at home this year. They're good on the road. God damn, they're Man, good. if I, I was wrong about them going to the club, too, in Boston. Because apparently it did something. I, I, I don't know. But if they Rudy can win game three old, at home. Rudy's an old fucking hag, y'all. He's. I believe that in, in, in when you're playing when you're playing in the playoffs, you stay your ass in your hotel, especially when you got your ass kicked that day. Rudy, <laughs> it's about unity and bonding, man. Bam, Bam, Bam out of bio wasn't with that group. It was the young kids event. It was Hakez yeah. and jo- Jovich and Hero who, and who, um, who High Smith who, and Caleb. Bam was probably somewhere else. Who knows? He was sleeping. They didn't play again for three more days. It's the night after yeah. the game. It was the, night, it was the night of the game, actually. How much trouble can they get in in freaking Boston? How enjoy look, themselves, man. They're millionaires. I don't enjoy myself. I'm different. I don't enjoy myself when I lose, man. Even when I was yeah. in high school. But when every, we lost, but I didn't not, want to do crap. Everybody's not like you, man. I know. You lose the state, the, the, the you lose the CFL Cup, and you're freaking sitting at a club that night. I wish I was on. I, was, I had one fucking foot. I couldn't go nowhere, man. I, and we lost. I was devastated because I know if I play, we win the game. But oh, you're yeah. you're that guy. If I play, we win. The rest no, of y'all suck. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I just know what I meant to that defense and how important my voice was to that defense. But let's go back to to these guys going Look, out and. I'm excited. Yeah, let's go back to these boys going out and hanging out. That's what people do. Get away from the game sometimes. You have to get away from it. You don't want to dwell on it sometimes. Some people don't do well on dwelling. They get in their heads and they play worse. Some people just need to get away and get in the atmosphere and get away, get their mind off it. We come back the next day. We have a walkthrough. We have another day. We practice and we get ready for the game. But Rudy said, oh, their legs are going to be done. This and that. Rudy. It's 72 I'm hours. from Miami. You're from Miami. We've seen enough teams yeah. come to Miami, They're be out till 5 a.m. and get beat by 30. And I know I know other players who out till 5 a.m. have 92 girls in, in their laps and they're throwing money and they go out and ball the next day off of Hennessy and Patron. And I know both ways. If Miami can win on Saturday, what does that do to Boston? It just tell them that they have to win. The next three out. Okay, of the now game. let's give a let's give a real answer now. If Miami wins Game Three and is up two to one on Boston, that's yeah, obviously yeah. a big if. Then, then that How just does mean, that, I mean that, that just means that the Heat losing six. They're not. You're not getting. <laughs> you're not going to get me on here talking nonsense, man. And 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 Kendrick Perkins is getting killed for saying he, he deserves it because we just did exactly what he said and he was wrong. And it just took the hit, Heat fifty percent to win the game. Um, 50, yeah, exactly. And so, I had a whole thing about Tyler Hero. I was about to talk well, I wasn't, about I wasn't to crush them to now. I was ready to crush them. I was about to kill him saying, you know, that being a top guy, you know. I'm just you know, This is bananas. We can move on, man. This is bananas. I can't believe it. I don't know. I'm what, cold, I, man. I can't still, believe I'm, this. We beat them. I thought we, we lost get five in a row to these guys this year. And we just beat them in Boston. You know what their record was in Boston this year? 37 and 4. Hey Rudy, before we end this, all I needed was one. All I needed was one game to say, Eric Spoelstra, Coach of the Year, best coach I ever seen. I'm back on the Eric Spoelstra. I'm back on the Eric Spoelstra man. The best he listened Eric to me because I said that shit last week. Remember, I said it on Sunday. No, no he you listened to me. Damn it, you wanted to fire him. So yeah, I did because he didn't play. Did what I said he should do, which was let the drivers go and stay with the shooters. One game and against the and he's without Jimmy Butler. He's the co- he's it's the incredible. best coach ever. It's incredible. It's incredible. All right, Don. I actually enjoyed that. As you guys can see, I didn't <clears throat> I didn't you know I didn't cut it short. I wasn't in your ear. I let it rock. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited. Uh, that being said, we're gonna leave the association to go into the league. And uh, I know. Um, oh, I just got something from the producers. 
our outdoor producers. I'm not the only one. Uh, we're not going to speak about the league this week. Uh, Roger Goodell, I'm yeah, sorry, no that. free, no free press. We're we're not doing that. I think that's perfect to wait till after the draft to really dive into that. I mean, didn't the producer say forget NFL? I'm confused. No, I meant, I meant, I meant forgot. I forgot to put the NFL on oh, the list. Oh, okay. My I, thought we, I thought we were skipping it. Okay. I thought, you know, what I'm saying? I, I, you know, like whatever works for you guys. Listen, listen. Because we're, we're, we, because I, I, I would love to talk about how JJ McCarthy is number one pick in the draft. No, no, tomorrow. we're not gonna do that. We're not doing that. We're, 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 gonna, we're gonna do gonna a special. We'll do a special. We'll do a special. Okay. I think we we'll should do a special. Do a special we'll do a special. We'll draft. do a special because I would love to discuss what my Vikings do. So we'll we'll do a special. But that being said, we're gonna jump right into a fan favorite, uh, Rudy. Rudy's rants. Rudy, just jump right into it, man. What's going on? What are you? What are your thoughts? What are you feeling? You know, this was a this was a weird topic because I'm gonna talk about this same person later on. In this, we're gonna be talking about him, about this man later on to, in this show. But Deion Sanders, oh, Lord. I actually agree with him. Oh, I was shocked at that. That's crazy because I was ready I to actually a, a one component. Okay, the Miami Hurricanes last year had a recruit named Pormani McLean. Mm-hmm. If you don't know who Kormani Kar- Kar- McLean was, he was the number one or number one or two player. I think he was number two player in the nation, number one corner in the nation, and he was committed to Miami for some time. And the day, the the week of signing day, <clears throat> it's when um, Dion got hired. Pretty much like within that time period, just within a couple of weeks of that, mm-hmm. by you know, now I, that, I think it was that month before by Colorado. Yeah. And he was, he basically pulled what he pulled with Travis Hunter when he took Travis Hunter from Florida State and got him to go to Jackson State. Now, Travis Hunter was a different type of kid. You can see that Travis Hunter is a real down to earth guy, real chill dude. Um, not, he seems just very nice. He, seem, he actually seems like he's still a kid in his mind, and he is. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you remember when he went to the, they went to the Lakers game, him and Shador, and Travis Hunter looked like he was at Disney World. I don't think with Travis Disney, Hunter with the Disney how, World hat. Huh? He's, probably just, he's just one of those kids. I don't think he realized how good he is. And that yeah. He's a hot commodity and sometimes. He, he's like, while, should, while, Shador, while Shador is sitting there acting like he's like, mm, this is what I do because, you know, my daddy's Dion. But, but Travis is like, I'm meeting LeBron. I just met LeBron James. You know, that, you know so you see that genuine joy. Yeah. Cormani McLean was an all-state level player at Lake Gibson, went to the state semifinals, and then as a senior transfers to Lakeland High School, a rival of Lake Gibson in this, I mean, the same area. And you're sitting here saying, well, why are you transferring as a senior when you've been at a school for three years or whatever, and you've had, you've had success? Why would you do that? So he does this, and that to me is a red flag. As a, to me, to me, the transferring in high schools is a red flag. When you transfer three times, um, it, yeah, you got guys transfer four times. I mean, nowadays, but they transfer like crazy. So it's a red flag. But it's I mean, I don't think he transferred three times, twice. But he, but to transfer as a senior when you've actually had a really good career, high school career, and you're the number one corner in the country, why are you transfer? Let alone why you transfer into a rival. It's just it's like going from central to northwestern, which I'll never understand how anyone can do that. And it's just weird to me. Never get it. Now, he flips to Colorado from Miami. Doesn't even have the decency to really let anyone know, just does it social media wise. I'm sure maybe they gave Mario Cristobal a call, but people in Miami that I know cover Miami, they did not know that Cormani was in a flip. They still thought he'd sign and so forth. And he goes to Colorado. Now, the type of kid that I've seen him to be just from social media, he looks like a high school kid who'd never been told no in his life. And I think that's what happened to Colorado. Yet you would think Dion would be the guy that could tell him no and he'd understand why and, 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 and potentially get that, look, you're playing for the number one cornerback that ever played football. And he's going to teach you. He barely plays early on. And I would say, I think it was like by week three or four or five, something like that. I'm like, this kid's going to transfer. Because the number one corner in the country expects to play. 
not sit the bench. That said, I think midway through the season, he started a few games in a row. In fact, there was video where he was being congratulated by Dion for playing a great game. But what happened when he was on the field, for the most part, he was burnt toast. He was getting smoked over and over and over and over again. And all you saw, and that's one of the things that I see with high school players, they get away with a, a get away with being long, athletic, and fast. Sorry, if your technique sucks, you're not going to be successful. If you don't know how to do the things that cornerbacks like Nick do, you're going to have problems. Rudy, and, <clears throat> I'm sorry to cut you off. If you don't fucking learn to watch film and study the game, like, you will get killed, man. I I didn't get good in football until I learned the game, learned how to watch film. I didn't I didn't learn, know how to watch film my first few years until I got to Winnipeg and I got to a coach named Coach J.Y. and my teammate named Brandon Alexander, who were film junkies, and they knew how to learn how to watch the game, how to pick up on clues how to not overexert myself by just playing with my athleticism because I ran a fucking 4-2, which I was still getting beat by players. And I'm like, why? I'm fast as hell. No, because just because I run a 4-2, I can get away with certain things. But to be good and great, I needed to know tips and clues because even though I ran a 4-2, if I don't know what's coming, I can't really use it because I'm playing behind the, the fucking eight ball every fucking time. And now I'm hoping that I can make up with my speed rather than just making up with my knowledge and not having to exert so much energy or, you know, just skills where I can just be there already because I know what's coming. Now I can really be really, really good because I can put the 4-2 with my fucking knowledge of the game. And now I'm a baller. But I, I just want to interrupt on that part. But go ahead. That's important for people to understand. Like, it's not a talent position. It's a skill position. You can be fast as hell, but if you can't, don't know how to don't know leverage and technique how to use you're it gonna, you're gonna get killed because these re wide receivers are gonna absolutely embarrass you but when you see he so he so he did so he played a few games he started a few games and and they go into the spring and they go through spring ball and now they have this post spring ball transfer portal it's like as if, as if they don't have enough transfer portal stuff going on in the fall in the early spring, now you can transfer after spring football. I don't get this. College football is a mess to me at this point that you can go through spring ball and then people just start transferring left and right because they didn't play enough in the spring or they didn't get enough reps in their mind. Or, um, quite I, frankly, I they're, chance, they're I don't have a chance to be the starter. I'm out. <laughs> like I, if I if I'm not start if I'm not guaranteed a starting spot, I quit. It is a bunch. There are a bunch of quitters today. These kids are being raised by parents of their enabling ass parents who are relying on these kids to make their, their, their lives so that they don't have to work anymore, which I think is pathetic in itself. But you, you don't, you don't know how to overcome adversity. There's no adversity here. I, if I don't start right now, it's a problem. If I'm not, my ass is not kissed. It's a problem. And I'm sick and tired of seeing this shit. But I knew this guy was going to transfer midseason. There was no doubt in my mind. When you flip flop on somebody, literally the day and don't tell any, the day of signing day and don't tell anybody, and you go ghost MIA, and then next thing you know, oh, he's committed to he's signing with Colorado. Like, bro, his mother says in a tweet, "Gotta be somewhere where you're appreciated and not just tolerated." God take the lead. We right behind you. Get the f Freaking hell out of here with that hot basura. It is garbage. Tolerated, not appreciated. Grow up. Teach your kids some freaking. I, I mean, this is where it goes back to parenting. This is a parenting issue. No, yeah. There are, there, I remember, God, I think it was Charles Barkley said that he wanted to leave Auburn after his freshman year. And his mama or grandma said, don't come back home type thing. Like, you take your ass back to school. Like, you make a commitment, and I get it. It's different. The world is different. It's not like he's getting, not getting broke off a boatload of money over there to be there. He didn't go to Colorado to be coached. He got there to get paid more, probably. And, and, and I'm not – that's my presumption. Um, but then – so, yeah, I have a big problem, this continued entitled attitude of these diva athletes. 
you're a five star, and and guess what happened this week? His own high school coach threw him under the bus. Told us that I don't know why Auburn would want him. He's a problem. He's a problem. When your high school coach says, after you're gone, he's a night. He's basically a nightmare to deal with. There's something there. There's something there, and Deion Sanders probably saw that. It's a shame that he didn't get to coach him and and work with him. And that's where I also think some – This is I'll go into this stuff with Dion later on and some of the other stuff that he's done and said in the past week that is just completely out of line in my opinion. But in this particular case, I understand. And I think it's a shame that this young man won't play for Dion, even though I, I'm not a fan of Dion. We all know this. Mm-hmm. But I think he could have benefited a great deal – if he actually acted like an adult and his mother said, no, you stay right there with that guy. Cause that guy's going to teach you to play the position that you want to play. And you want to be a pro. He's going to teach you better than anyone else. He may not be able to coach an offensive lineman, a running back, a quarterback or any other position, but he can he coach cornerbacks. And you're a six, 375 pound cornerback. He can teach you if you listen. But this goes back to these kids being told, yes, 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 their whole lives and never hearing, buddy, you got to earn this shit. And, and, you know, Rudy always say that I'm this new school approach. I just yeah. like to view shit from an overall perspective. And then I, and, I, and I change my mind as things go on. But these kids are soft as fuck. And I fucking can't stand it, man, because that's not how I grew up. And I never had a problem with being coached fucking hard because if I'm getting coached hard, I know the coach care about me. He wants me to be good. When that coach stop fucking talking to you, it's a fucking problem. That means he don't care about you. But when that coach is on you and riding you, no, did he? When he's on you and riding you, that means he's caring. He wants you to do great. He sees something in you. When he sees something in you, that means he's putting his time. He cares because... He knows you can do so much more and go further because he knows he's been around the landscape a long time to see this type of shit. But a lot of these kids and their parents are enablers. Oh, no. no, no, no. Because sometimes, you know, a lot of this shit stems from because their parents wasn't fucking good enough back then. And they felt like they got shafted and they weren't just fucking good enough. So they want to take the blame and bring it to their kids and and, and say, oh, because my kids getting treated probably how I got treated. No, you fucking suck. And now you, your kid is fucking good. And you're trying to ride that fucking coattail to another fucking level. But if you don't make your kid tough enough and strong enough for the real world, my fucking word is adapt in life, man. If you can't adapt in fucking life to all the circumstances, you won't go nowhere, man. If you stop your kid from learning how to adapt, then he won't go or she won't go nowhere because this shit's all about adapting and adjusting because Nothing's going to be however you fucking thought it was. Nothing in life that goes that way. And these kids in college, man, they are benefiting from this new fucking age. I don't even know how the commissioner and shit let it go just because the college coaches could go different places and things in that nature without being fucking reprimanded about it. They said, oh, we can let everybody else go. I say, if that's okay, once a coach goes somewhere, I'm okay with, with, with kids going different places. But if they're not going anywhere, you committed to that coach, you should have to wait out a fucking year. I have no problem with that rule, what it was before. You should have to wait out a year because that's what you committed to. You should go there at least for one fucking year and wait out another year before you go to another D1 school. Because that's what it should be because you should be. There have always been fucking, like, if you have, there always, when, if you do something and it don't go your way, it's a fucking problem. Like, it's always you have to deal with that shit. You can't just go to the next fucking thing, dog. And I don't like how it's, how it's being handled nowadays. This fucking sucks, man. The University of Miami, they still shafted me in 1995. I got screwed, man. You? I didn't get a... Uh, <laughs> I didn't get my football scholarship to Miami. I'm still pissed. Donald's uh, fucking looking at you like crazy. Like. I feel... I feel. I, I, I mean, my God, the love I had for that... I'm kidding. But, yeah. That's it's exhausting. And I told my kids this. I've said the day a coach stops coaching you, he gave up on you. Yeah. He gave up on you. I don't know if you remember when we were doing travel ball and we were in Orlando and, and I made T.Y. cry in a game. He came yeah. off and he went to the end of the bench. He started crying. T.Y. Hilton. I love you, T.Y. Hilton. You were, I lo- your loyalty transcends, man. 
And your family's loyalty transcends because you could have gone anywhere after that first year, but you stayed with us, team in the zone, for the entirety of your high school career, and I'll never forget that. But T.Y. Hilton, when he was 14 years old, he was all county <laughs> at Miami Springs. He turned that entire high school program around. And there was expectations, but he was still 14. And when we played, and he was playing 17U. It's a different animal. You know that. It's just a different animal because in high school, you're not just 17. You're 17, 16, 15, whatever. But he was a badass in high school. And he, he, but he also thought that he should take every single shot there was, if you remember. And when he didn't take that shot, he was upset. And I got on him because I knew how good he was. And, you know, it, it's one of those things where, and I tell, told him, like, if, I, if I'm not yelling at you, I don't like you no more. The day I stop, the day I stop yelling at you, give up. Bye. Rudy, Bye. Best, Rudy best stop yelling at me on that team. Bye. He didn't care about me no more. Ah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. I mean, I, I just wish these kids would actually show some levels of adversity. And you know what happened in Miami too? A bunch of guys left, but you know these kids they all they all leave, and it's just it's it's so old. Because you mentioned the penalty. The penalty for coaches is that they have to play. There has to be their buyouts. Now the schools typically pay them who are hiring them, but it's still a penalty for in in a, in a sense. And yeah, I, I have no problem with guys leaving, but this crap where guys are leaving, coming and going, transfer transfer in in the spring, transfer out when spring ball ends. That actually happened. Can you imagine transferring somewhere in January and transferring in in April? That's crazy. That's absurd. But that's all I, I got, Don. I don't like the way I don't like where college football is going. Um, <laughs> they might as well just just it's about to be a shit show, man. Might as well let these kids do whatever the fuck they want after high school. They they're gonna have to change the rules back, man. Because no, of, of course they do because the, they got less rules than NFL players. You don't even know who you're rooting for anymore because, like Rudy say, your kid could be there for the first week of the game of the season. And by the second week, he transferred to a fucking different school just because he didn't like the way coaching and playing the first game. He took me out in the second quarter. I'm out. You're out. Motherfucker, work. There's something called working for it, man. It's, but you'll find the benefits of it because a lot of coaches don't like dealing with that shit, man. Once you're not good at once you, you're, you're fucking with my team chemistry and things of that nature, man, I'm okay. You can go, man. But a lot of these coaches, a lot of these kids aren't coachable, man. And it, it changed all the right. landscape, dog. It's crazy. All right, all right. Uh, Rudy, I like that rant. Some things I agreed with. I'm letting roll today. He's, he's, um, yeah, I, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be back. I wasn't here last week. So I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kicking it like I'm a viewer, I'm a listener. And I'm going to give you guys some wiggle room. Um, you know, you know my hand. son asked, do you skateboard? No. Um, because he saw the board in your background. He was wondering if you skateboarded. No, well, actually, I used to when I was much younger. But no, by oh, day, yeah. no, I'm a sports marketer in PSG, uh, one of our gotcha. clients, and that's a project we worked on. So ah, cool. That's it. That's cool. it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna jump into uh my favorite part of the show because I'm freaking biased. Uh, Don's dimes. <laughs> um, uh, Phoenix Suns wish they had someone to throw dimes. <laughs> uh, piggybacking on Nick earlier, but um. As you guys might have heard, Reggie Bush received his Heisman back, which um, well reserved, uh, well deserved. Uh, that's reserved. Um, uh, the Heisman alumni are reserved for the best college football players of, of of their year, and there was no no arguing that year. Reggie Bush was a video game player. Don's dime has to do with restrictions. He was penalized because at the time the NCAA had ridiculous restrictions over benefits that they still have. People don't realize that NIL is kind of a wall over people's eyes. It's not, they're still not really sharing the way that they should, but that's neither here nor there. That's another special that we can do, but um, it's about restrictions. So, my Don's Dimes to you guys is, is there a restriction on a sport right now that you would want to remove? And I'm going to give you an example of a restriction. I just learned, read today, that Andy Reid got a contract extension. Much deserved. Uh, there is no cap. 
yeah, he 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 signed an extension, and um, it's reportedly over north of twenty, twenty million. Um, there's no cap, no restriction on coaches salaries in the NFL or in the NBA. Um, there's no there's no salary on coaches salaries anywhere. The reason I think that's odd is because coaches really don't do much without their players. Um, I think some of the issues that are happening in the NCAA because some of these coaches are paid incredibly well and these players receive nothing. So for me, I would remove, and this is just wishful thinking, I it'll never happen, but I would remove salary caps from major sports and just allow owners to make their own mistakes on their own. They're all billionaires. They're all making money. And see where cheap. it could go. Huh? Some of them are cheap as hell. So Cheap as hell. So that's, that's so one want... restriction I would remove. Allow, allow me to finish my thought, guys. Um, that's one restriction I would remove because for the longest, people were upset at Rudy and I's big bad Yankees. Because they said we just bought everything. But no, we actually, in the 90s and 2000s, knew how to construct a fucking team. And we took care of our people. So when they got there, we paid them. The reason why we got A-Rod is because Boston Celtics didn't have the money to pay him. He was going to take a pay cut to go there. And the MLBPA said, no, we, you can't do that. You're going ru- you, to ruin the league. We had the money to pay him. So that's why we were able to get him. And for the longest, people were just like, oh, my God, you guys can pay everyone. But the next 15 years, that hurt us. <laughs> we're, we're paying Juan Carlos Stanton right now. Oh, my gosh. I had to say that out loud. But um, so that's hurt us as well. I would love to see what other leagues would be able to do if they didn't have salary caps. That's just one of the restrictions I removed. And it was inspired by... um. The bullshit that Reggie Bush has gone through, had to go through for 15 years. For 15 years, you guys have labeled this man a criminal. Just put him in a bad light. You took him out of the, 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 the alumni or brotherhood that's only maybe 80 guys. And now he gets it back. What is he supposed to be thankful for? It Like, I would, I don't know. I wouldn't have been as nice receiving it as he's been. So... Shout out to him. He's very noble for that. And he deserved it. He was always the Heisman Trophy winner in our eyes. It never changed our view of him. But it just sucked that he had to go through that. But yeah, that would be one of the restrictions I would remove um, from sports is the salary caps to see what, what will happen. What what these owners would be willing to do to make yeah, their teams Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, and Tyreek Hill will be on the same fucking team getting the ball thrown to him by fucking Patrick Mahomes. No, it wouldn't be that easy because everyone would have the ability to spend because they all want the ball, Nick. Exactly. You're not, they're not, that's but not going to work. Money. Like, but there's not just they one want team money that's willing to ball. spend. They want, they won't get the money without the ball. Well, I'm, if they already, if, they, if he catches 50, if they catch 50 passes, they're not getting the money. They already established themselves. They, I could throw all three of them 100 balls. Can do that, and they would, get, and they would, and they would catch sixty of them. No, no, I could throw them one hundred and fifty balls. They'll catch one hundred and twenty. They can't double all of them. But you say no, that but, as if there's not going to be more than one owner. So they're going to throw seventy five times a game. Like there's going to be 55. owners that are willing to spend. Anyway, that's each. that's that's mine. What do you guys have? Do you have one, or you want to uh, just add? I already, to I already. I already know that I do, man. I eliminate the franchise tag. That's the most bullshit shit I've ever seen in my life. The franchise fucking tag. To keep a player there restricted under your team for no fucking reason because you could pay them cheap and under the, the fucking shit that they should be getting on a real fucking contract. And you get them for one year, they could get hurt and anything that could happen to them. And they didn't get the contract that they deserve. They're basically a fucking lame duck coach as a lame duck player. And you hold them back from getting paid like they should get paid. It's in this most brutal sport of football. That's, we will definitely take away franchise tag, man. Why are these, Why is that something that you could be able to do? I don't like it. Never did. Never will. 
it takes away from the players getting what they deserve after what they earned, um, things in that nature. Like you just put uh, Saquon under a fucking franchise tag when he was the best player on the team who carried the Giants, and then you Daniel Jones get hurt who got all the money that Saquon should have got. And look at that situation right now. Franchise tags are stupid. Um, should eliminate it. Get rid of it. Done. Um. Real quick, I'll just touch on what you guys said. I just want to touch on it real fast. I think the problem with uh, the elimination of salary caps is you have you have billionaires and you got billionaires. <laughs> you got Steve Ballmer and then you got the guy who's worth five billion and Ballmer's worth one hundred and thirty-two billion. Exactly. I, I think that's the problem that would exist is that you have billionaires and you got billionaire billionaires. Um, but eh, I mean, they don't have a cap in baseball. I, I would eliminate I would eliminate completely these fucking quirky ass manipulated contracts in baseball. I hate the the quirky contract. I cannot stand the fact that the Los Angeles Dodgers can sign someone for seven hundred million dollars and not have to pay them for ten years. That's not a contract in fact that's so to me that's so bad for the game because it's a manipulation of of of, of rules that don't exist um you know, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I don't think it's, I just don't like it at all. So, for example, you're able to pay Shohei Otani $700 million and, and, and then put it over, you know, a $20 million. He's getting paid $2 million a year, basically, and he's deferring $680 million of it. It, it, it's crazy that you can just defer money for 20 years. I mean, I, I know the Bobby Bonilla contract that existed where he was getting a million dollars a year for like 30 years after he retired. That's fine. I can live with that. But there has to be some limit to, to deferred money for players, let alone signing arguably the best or second or third best player in the league to a $700 million deal and you defer $680 million. I mean, I think he needs the money now because his, his uh, interpreter gave a lot of his money away. But <laughs> but then at the same time, you know, he, they're able to then sign the pitcher from um, Yamamoto from Japan who was getting another $300 million. So they spent a billion dollars on two deals, but they really didn't spend that. And what I mean, I'm not going to say this negatively, but what happens if something happens to Otani? Does the contract go to his family? Or I, I don't know. Maybe you know, Don. Because I don't know that contracts carry over if something happens to someone and they, you know. God forbid. God forbid. I'm just giving an example. They, they stole to, a player for nothing. Yeah, if they were to transition, typically those contracts go into a trust and it would be awarded to their family over a period I would of time. Ho- I would hope so and make that's, them pay it. Because, but I just think that bad. being able to pay people like that but not pay them is a, is a manipulation of the sport. I get yeah, contract restructuring, it absolutely is. but it's a complete absolutely. manipulation of the sport and you need to limit what you can defer. Uh, it, uh, just uh, in my opinion, completely uh, limit what you defer. The franchise tag, by the way, Nick, I think they should exist for one year, not the continuation of seasons. Like the, I think it's why, multiple years. Why one year? Let me God be a fan. Because, because, because they're still getting paid in the top five, in the top five of the oh, league at their position. Year. Yeah. What they're still getting paid. What if, more, injury, what if all times it, it, it is a form of prison to lock well, someone in I, for I, a I, year? I don't mind going to prison whoa, for fifteen whoa, whoa, million. Whoa. I don't mind going to prison for thirty million. Nick, I mean, Nick, I, I, Nick, I, Nick, Nick, Nick. There's different levels of prison. Martha Stewart. <laughs> Martha Stewart. I, I'll, I'll take that level of prison. And then, and then there's San Quentin. I'm not talking about. <laughs> You know where the real dudes be. I'm talking about Club Med. But that, know, but Donald, that, that, that exists in baseball too. It's called salary arbitration. First of all, arbitration is the worst rule in sports. Are it you, is. It's to horrible. To be able to lock are, a are guy in too, for seven years. Are seven y'all years. Y'all mad that y'all, are y'all two Yankees fan mad that y'all ain't come up with it first and get Otani? First no, all, not at all. I would never have done that. So he, he, he doesn't fit. He's a, he's a, he, he strikes out 170 times a year. I did not want him. I'm be honest. With you. I don't. I don't. I don't need he another 170 strikeout not, guy. I don't want that. I, I, the, this is uh, listen. No, fuck you. The only guy I, want, I wanted. The, I wanted the pitcher. That's why. No, I wanted. the only what the fucking guy I want. I want to Soto. He's comparable to Soto, and I just because I've been a fan of him. I've watched him coming up. 
Azuna. I knew Ronald was going to be as good as he is. Acuna? I, I, Acuna, I mean. Acuna. Yeah. I knew he was a set of Zuna, who was amazing with the Marlins and then what the hell happened. Yeah, and then he, went, but, then he sucked. <laughs> yeah. Acuna, I knew Ronald was going to be as good as he is right now. I knew it, but that's just, that's neither here nor there. But yeah, back back to you, Rudy. Back to yeah, you. I, I just feel like that's like, you know, it. I think the arbitration, like arbitration in baseball is actually worse than the franchise tag. Because those guys, you know what Aaron Judge got paid in arbitration, Nick? Like $7 million or something like that? It was trash. He was getting paid, sh- or no, I'm sorry. Did he have, was it, no, he got, you know, he had a good number, but his number wasn't anywhere remote to being in the top five positions. Dude, it was one year was- Mookie got about, he, he broke the record. He got like $18 million in arbitration. And yeah. he did the numbers. He was worth uh-huh. $50 million for the Boston Red Sox that year. And they they had him in arbitration three years in a row. Like, it's the worst. And, oh, you know why? Oh, Nick. I, know, I correct myself. Guy, Judge, you know, got ni- Judge got $19 million, My bad. You know why arbitration is even worse? Because it's only for freaking certain players. If you come from Dominican Republic, Venezuela, one of these countries, you're eligible for a big contract year two. You can go get a $60, 70 80 $100 million contract. If you're an American player coming through the ranks, they can keep you in arbitration to eternity, bro. It's they, the, they can oh, they manipulate. It's, it's such a horrible and rule. Though. Nick, t- baseball teams, rule. Donald, you know this. You know this already. But Nick, baseball teams manipulate players based on not even start if they don't start the season in the bigs, they got another year at it or something like that. So they have another year of control. So I can yeah. have you not be in the majors on day one and season opener, bring you up in day two. Yeah, and I've now it. extended you another year, something like that. Nuts. They have rules nuts, that basically bro. lock these players in worse than football. And that's and how many people don't understand. Like a number one pick, is, you won't see him for a couple years. Sport, it's, a game. Game. It's, it's a physical game. It's a physical game. You got to maximize the time while you can play and be great. So Judge, I mean, hit, Judge hit 62 homers and got $19 million in arbitration. The man should have to make forty million dollars, and, and I mean he got nineteen million for arbitration. Like, tell me how that's justifiable. I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, the year before, he, and he was the MVP that year. I'm with you. So he got, yeah, he was he was the MVP. He got the big deal after he was the MVP, but the year before he got nineteen million dollars. Like, I just think that the arbitration is a bad rule too. But I would definitely get rid of these deferred contracts. These deferred comp contracts are crazy in baseball. Yeah, or, or well, I like cap them. Captain. I like it. So I think all three of between, us had. I'm in between them not having a franchise tag and NBA players getting guaranteed contracts and not being able to. Well, to, you want to know what I think about NBA de- uh, uh, max deals? I think they're bullshit. I think max deals in the NBA are trash. If you want LeBron James should make a hundred million dollars to play. Yes. And I, but you know what? You need to. The problem is, I know you don't want to have a cat, but. Give them a hundred million. Now you fill the rest of that money with all these bums. Yeah, so this, that's the problem. Like, with that. This but is the problem. He deserves, you, you, you have to give him guaranteed but, contracts. And then you have another player like Tobias Harris that's making. Listen, close to listen, Jalen Brown's with, making Jalen Brown's getting sixty million dollars a year this year. Listen, right? listen, but guys, 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 right now, hey, we're, hey, hey, we're, Jalen we're, Brown could be. Listen, but we're towing the line of pocket watching. I don't pocket watch. It's not about that. We're, I don't want to pocket no, watch. No, we're not we're, we're, doing that. No, I'm just we're saying not. we're towing Listen. the line. My towing tickets line. are getting more expensive every year, man. Who do you think Hold that on. cost is passed on but to? What I'm saying is they have to get the guaranteed contracts because the money is being dispersed to the team. No, no I'm, like saying, I'm fine with con- guaranteed. Guaranteed is fine. It's the max deal. Like that Nick, they, Nick they're, they're max deal, the super maxes and all that shit. I think you should be able to pay your player whatever the fuck you want to pay him. Yes, because LeBron's but been you... underpaid his entire career. Exactly. Yeah. So so was well, Michael Jordan. Absolutely. You can pay him whatever you want to pay him, and you figure out how to manage the rest of it underneath that. Because if you have, let's say you have a four hundred million dollar cap, I'm I'm throwing a number out there. Let's say what is the cap of the NBA? Two hundred, three hundred million. Mm-hmm. So, like no, no, it's like two hundred fifty, hundred and eighty. Uh, yeah, let's say it's two hundred million. Hundred twenty three, hundred and fifty something. And, around. Well, LeBron's getting seventy-five million of that cap. It's one forty. He deserves it, huh? One forty. One forty. Yeah. LeBron gets ninety million of that cap, and now I gotta fill in the rest of the dots because if I don't have a max contract, and I'm LeBron James, I said I want ninety million dollars. Figure it out. 
Mm-hmm. You put it, you do what you gotta do. I deserve the money. I've been here for 21, 20 years. I'm still scoring at 20. LeBron James this year, god damn, that man shot 54% from the field. So and 41% from three. Yeah. You don't defend, he doesn't defend anyone, but he his numbers, like he shot his best percentage since he was with the Heat. Yeah, That's incredible. That That's incredible. 56. And he did it shooting, then he did it shooting threes. He shot 40. 41% from three. That's, in, that's, that's incredible. After 20 years, okay. you shouldn't want to shoot the ball from three. Listen, listen. Relax, guys. Relax. Relax on our elders. Relax on our elders. Um, as we segue off this, Nick, man, you've had a lot to say in the chat. You've had a lot to say in our chat about your picks. We're going to dive right into Nick's picks for the rest of the week. Nick, what do you got? Yeah, so this week, man, I think last week I hit him with something nice and special. I think we hit him with something. I don't remember what it was, but I won. I remember that. Um, So this week, this is for everybody that's, you know, trying to come up with a little something, something, something. I'm not saying to do it like, you know, like I'm going to do it. So I'm just throwing out there what I'm going to do. John T. Murray, I mean, John T. Porter. I stay away from this. Or you can now, if you want to. Uh, Rudy, chill out. Rudy, relax. Rudy, make me laugh, man. I'm trying to fucking get something out right now. Uh, did you see what Larry Nance Jr. did? No. What did he do? He said, I bet you. <laughs> I would bet. Because, no, I'm not. I don't bet. I don't matter any sites. I'm not John T. Ford. The press conference. I, I, I apologize. I'm sorry. All right. Um, this is what I'm doing this week, man. I'm taking um, Indiana minus five point five over the Bucks because you know what I said. I said that the Bucks are going to come back from three to one, so they're going to lose these next couple games. Giannis is going to come back. They're going to win the game series in seven. My guy Doc River flips it around. Flip the script. That's what we're doing this year. 2024 is called flip the script. 24. Um, um, Dallas and Minnesota and the Clippers series. Dallas and Clippers, man, it's been a low scoring playoffs going on so far. I think they go over 209.5. So take the over on that. And I'm also taking Minnesota and Phoenix, the over 206.5. I can believe both teams will get over 100 points. So they need another couple points. I think, uh, Phoenix gets a little hot. They start shooting the ball a little bit better at their home court. They're over 206.5. Those are my three picks this week. For anybody besides NBA players, NFL players, people that are actually playing the game, don't listen to this. Everybody else, win that money if you can. <laughs> All right. All right. That's 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 Nick's picks. Uh, his views are not the views of Come On Now, the podcast. His what views are not sanctioned I, by Vegas. His, view, his, his picks are not... Co-signed by Rudy and I, are not so what follow at your own peril. Follow at your own peril. With that being said, we are gonna dive right into a new fan favorite. It's Dana White's favorite part of our show, Combat Corner. Combat Corner. Combat Corner. Uh, this one's gonna be interesting because Rudy typically takes this one. Oh, but I have a lot to say this week. Uh-oh. It's gonna be rare. It's gonna be rare. Uh, Rudy, are you are you ready? Right. I've been waiting. We we were watching that fight <laughs> via uh, text message. I'm gonna take off my hat. I've been waiting for this one. Oh, Get going, God. bro. <laughs> okay, let's start off by saying boxing is theater. It's theater. I came up boxing. I understand the business behind it. Um, we grew up watching Mike Tyson fights. It was theater. It was like a movie coming out, you know? But then things got laughable. You know, streamers got involved and started to take away from my sport. Then it just got downright weird. Boxing just got weird. But I just have to start off by speaking to Devin Haney. <laughs> what the fuck were you doing? No, seriously, what the fuck were you doing? Because I'm a Devin Haney fan. 
and most real boxers know, like real boxers know, Devin Haney is a superior defensive tactician. When he got hit that first time, it was like someone threw cold water on him when he was asleep. He just didn't, he didn't fucking see it coming. And this is a guy who's fought I Lemonchenko, mean, Kambasis. Like, he's fought heavy punchers that have given him rounds. And he just ate him. That punch felt like... It, it, go back to see his reaction. Like, Rudy, his reaction, it, it was just it was shocking to him. It was shocking to him. And I instantly knew this motherfucker's in trouble. Because I've never seen him react that way to a punch. Never seen him react that way. So I said to myself, okay. He's probably the most comparable to Floyd Mayweather we've ever seen. Mayweather's been rocked before, but he gets it back. So I said, oh, no, Haney's going to get it back. He's going to get it on the points. He's going to win the fight on the points. That was a bunny punch. <sighs> Ryan Garcia, who I refuse to call king. He's not my king. Proceeds to put on a Bud Crawford-style ass-whooping on this man. Round after round, he he's just he's 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 getting his points. He's he's just, he's finding his openings. He's and like I don't want to hear anybody talk about the height difference. No, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Haney is a defensive tactician. I'm gonna give that to him, and I'm gonna start go back by saying if they have the rematch, I think Haney wins. I'm going off and saying that, but this fight, Garcia showed me two things. One, I've always knew how skilled he was. I think as a complete fighter, he can't touch some of these guys. But the man probably has the best jab or rear hook in all of boxing. And Haney, you knew this. You guys fought six times coming up in the amateurs. You knew this. He's, he won three of the fights. This is not someone that's new to you. Everyone knew that there was a possibility that this guy could win the fight. Like, let's be real. I love Tank Davis, but... Ryan should have never took that fucking fight. He went underweight. He had a hydration clause. None of that shit made sense. His own people told him. Bernard Hopkins, who was one of the top guys at Golden Boy, who was a former fighter forever, told him not to take the fucking fight. And he took it. But it showed people how much heart he had. That being said, Haney, you let us down. You let us down. Uh, you let real boxing fans down. Because now this guy gets the ability to talk shit for the next six months. Ryan, you deserve it. You get to talk shit to everybody for six months. You deserve it. De La Hoya. It's hilarious that you're taking credit for this fight. <laughs> it's hilarious. Because you left my man Ryan hanging when Tank dropped him. You left the fucking arena. He had no support. No fucking support. People would have thought that he was the money team. All the love he received after that fight that he lost were coming from Tank's team. None of his people stood around. So I just thought it was interesting after this fight. These guys were chirping at the Haney camp. And now it's Golden Boy, Golden Boy. And everyone's there. And it's like, wow, this guy didn't get the support in a loss, though. He didn't get the support in a loss. Hey, Nick, man. I've been to a lot of your games, man. I don't think I left the stands if you took a loss. I wouldn't be a friend. I wouldn't be your brother. I've, 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 I was there. I was there through the wins, the championship wins, the losses. I was there, supported you. But these guys that made millions of dollars off this kid's back were not there when Tank dropped them. I just thought that was interesting. That's, that's my second point for that. Third point, Haney. A little birdie, um, a.k.a. my brother, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont, brought to my attention that you celebrated the loss. I'm utterly flab flabbergasted by that. Utterly. You have to remember the first belt that you won, everyone discredited you for it. You were a champion and people had an asterisk next to it because they, they gave you an interim belt. 
No one. But then you fought. You went through the ranks and you won real belts. You went to Australia. Beat this guy twice. Beat Lomachenko. Who, well, I personally think that was split. Whatever. But you really beat some real people. And you got the respect. I always give you the respect because I became a boxing and so I know how good you are. But it's like, you know this. Your cat knows this. You were discredited for the belt you got. Now you're celebrating the belt you shouldn't have because this kid didn't make weight. What the fuck are you, what are you doing over there? What are you doing over there? And I'm not a fan of the big three. That's top rank, golden boy, PBC. Some may say big four because of match from boxing. Um, Boxing promotions are probably the most cutthroat industry in the world. Uh, and I mean more cutthroat probably than dr- the drug business. It's pretty mm-hmm. fuck. It's wild. It's wild. And you're talking about someone who works in UFC for years. That that shit is wild. Haney does his own things. He's he he's smart. He does one two fight deals with top rank. He does he he has the freedom to make his moves. And and I think that's incredibly intelligent for him. He's just not as marketable as Ryan Garcia and Tank. But if he becomes that, he can make a ton of money. But sometimes it shows that he doesn't have this um, major figure like a, a, a golden boy in a match room and these guys behind it because you can see sometimes they're not polished. Um, Rudy brought to my attention a video of uh, Bill Haney getting into it with Floyd Mayweather um, on the internet. and And I'm... I'm a person that likes to uh, have a sense of decorum when I'm in the room. I drink wine with my pinky up. I read books. Um, I watch the news. So I just, I I try to present myself in a certain light. And I I remember that I'm a person of color. So when I saw, um, so when I saw the video, I was utterly, uh, bougie, bougie. Tight ass? I don't know what you said. But um I was I was upset, Rudy. I was. Nick, I was upset because we We have have people of color, minorities. We have to present ourselves in a certain light at all times. At all times, we have to. And when you're in a position of power where the world can see you, especially on a stage like boxing. You're being judged for everything you do. So you have to know as someone's representative, parent, associate, any, anything you do affects the fighter. And these are fighters that are trying to sell pay-per-view fights. You're trying to get the public to spend $80, which I won't, um, to watch your fight. And, and yeah, we're buying into the spectacle of it all. But boxing is like every other sport. You're trying to get younger fans. Every sport is trying to do that. They they want if you can get a boxing fan at ten, they're going to be a doc boxing fan for the next fifty years. That's every sport's trying to lock in their next group of fans for the next fifty years. So when you do things like that for for both of them, Mayweather and Haney, it's like, hey, you guys have other fighters that you want to represent. You do have to know when your personal disagreements with each other affect the people you represent and so i wasn't a fan of seeing it i just thought that could have been something that happened over facetime i'm not sure why they cho- chose to um, have this dialogue on taylor swift's internet not really sure why they chose to do that that was weird to me and no matter what their backgrounds are i respect both gentlemen they've done a lot for the sport um, I love what Haney's doing, but I will say as a fan, he let me fucking down. Um, fourth, fourth. Ryan Garcia, I think you need therapy. I do. I think I think you need to go away. You have a you have a ton of money to um to like a retreat in Palm Springs. Uh, I I think you live in California. Some are real fucking nice, real nice. Um Cause your interviews have been all over the fucking place, all over the place. It's um, and I'm not one to call anyone out. I'm I'm saying it from a place of love. You're boxing. You've been boxing since 
I think four years old, you're probably taking a lot of hits to your head. Probably I'm not saying you have CTE. I'm just saying you're, you're out of control. That that post fight interview, some people thought it was entertaining. I was terrified. I was, I was goddamn terrified. Um, and 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 the reason I want to throw that out there is you know your your boss, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, had to battle a lot of demons throughout his career. A lot of people who aren't fans of him that don't know him, he he's battled alcoholism throughout his entire career. He's battled drugs. You know, there were some cross-dressing things that happened. There was a De La Hoya battled a lot. And this is the guy you stand next to. So I've learned that you are, it seems like you have a good relationship with, um, uh, what's this one? Mexican guy. Oh, my God. I'm drawing a blank. Um, the face of boxing right now. Oh, my God. That's uh, that what? Canelo. Canelo. What? Nick, what is wrong with you? Anyway. Um, oh my gosh. Um, and, you know, you never hear anything out of Canelo's camp. He's, he's, he's practiced this level of professionalism for so long. And I think that's someone you, you should stand next to. Seeing the way he, he, he goes about his business is really, really good. He doesn't get into any shit. If there's some things going on, we don't know about it. Um, if he hangs with El Chapo's sons, we don't know about it in Mexico. We don't know anything. And I love what he does. So I think you need to stand next to that. But I'm saying it from a place of actual concern. I think there's some internal things going on with uh, Ryan Garcia. And I, I speak to him because he's a father. He's a father of three. And he's a young man. So, you know, God willing, he has another 10 years of his career. He, he takes care of his mental. Bro, for real. So I'm just going to recap. Uh, one, Devin Haney, you, you let me the fuck down. Let me down. Um, uh, two, I think boxing is theater, and it's it's sometimes it's, it's embarrassing. Sometimes it's embarrassing. Uh, three, uh, Haney Mayweather, stop embarrassing us. Stop, stop. Like you, stop embarrassing people of color. Like you guys should have kept that shit on Facetime. Hit each other on the WhatsApp video chat. Like, come on now. And uh, four, Ryan Garcia, man. Therapy. Therapy. They do it visually now too. There's apps for it. You can jump on the app, do what do whatever you need to do, and just it's, take care of yourself, man. But I would love to see the rematch. I don't, Brian, I don't want you to duck. I don't want you to go pick a scrub because I know Delahoy is probably gonna have you go pick someone that no. Do the rematch, dude. You didn't get the belt. Don't go up. Do not go up, man. You have unfinished business. Get those belts. Lock in 140 before you get to 147 because that's where the monsters are. So I heard him say, like, oh, no, I'm ready to take a nap. Hey, 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 relax. 147 are where the monsters are. Relax. D. Take care of 140. D, yeah. good question. You're in boxing. You box before and things of that nature. How big is three pounds of not making the weight? Effect in the fight. Mm, not at all. Just not at all. It's not at all. That's more of a of a certification thing. Like they want to be able to keep the classes and the way they are. But everyone knows when you fight, especially on fight day, your weight fluctuates up and down. Um, what that showed everyone was. He wasn't disciplined. That's what that showed. It's like, because that's the number one thing you need to do. Like, you're doing that for the belt. You're doing it for the classification. Everyone knows like how important that is. Everyone doesn't play. So when you learn that he was drinking during the week, you, dude, one beer when you're on um, fight week, you can go up four pounds. It's like that's people don't play those games. So like to hear that he had all that wheat in his body, like of course you're. Your your weight was up and fucking down. Like it was just it it just showed like he just didn't take it serious. But it also should tell any other fighter how scary he is. He wasn't he wasn't sharp. And look what he could do. Can, can I chime in real quick before we finish this up? Yeah. Um, I, I'm actually a big Ryan Garcia fan, and I really thought when they made the fight that he'd win the fight. 
And then he went on that weird little social media thing where he looked like he was <clears throat> losing his mind. And now I know he says now that it was all for shtick and fake. And uh, I don't believe that because I think a lot of fighters will say stuff after they win that they'd never say after they lose or they'll say after they lose that they'd never say if they won. Like Jamal Hill in the UFC was healthy, 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 and all's great. And then all of a sudden, he lo- he gets knocked out in three minutes, and he's crying and complaining about, I don't want to say crying, but, but voicing this, I took a short notice fight, even though Alex Pereira took the exact same short notice fight. So you're making excuses now for why you got knocked out. That's the sport. So I, I was concerned. And then when he missed weight, I don't think he missed by 3.2 pounds. I think he missed by a pound. Because he drank a beer on the stage, which if it's 16 ounces, that's a pound. He was wearing some long ass pants along with some heavy ass shoes. That could be a pound and a half there. So I don't think he was 3.2 pounds over. I think he's probably a pound, a pound and a half over maybe. That said, I'm, that, that gave me cause to question, is this guy in shape? Now, even against Tank, I thought he beat Tank. However... That rehydration thing was huge because if you looked at how big he – he walked in at 160-plus pounds in that fight on Saturday. And he – they showed pictures of him against Tank and again and in this one. He looked drawn the hell out against Tank. So – and I'm not saying that he'd beat Tank now if they fought at 147, but I think it's a much more competitive fight. Um, but, man, Haney showed some massive deficiencies with his defense on that left hook. He got hit with it every single time. And I watched some analysis from some boxing experts where they're talking about how every time he throws his jab, it's like he cocks back, like almost like a bow and arrow type of thing. And when he got hit, his eyes look like, oh, my God. And I am floored that one judge had it 112-112, but I'm not. Sh- I'm floored but not shocked because – it is, it's just boxing is boxing. I thought he won. I had it 114, 109. Um, I thought Garcia really, God, he hit so damn hard. And when he decided he wanted to fight, Devin Haney had no answer. I have a question for you, though, Don, on this one. Did you see the shorts that Devin Haney was wearing? Yeah. It was like he was wearing joggers for yeah. boxing shorts. And by the middle of the fight, they, they were, were soaked. They were heavy. Who the hell? They're, I mean, I know it's made by it said Essentials on there. That's a clothing brand. But don't they make a? a you're supposed to wear like a a freaking wick away short. That short had to be hep- and it looked like he was wearing UGGs for boxing shoes. Oh, yeah. You know, it his was, outfit was, it was weird heavy. to me. And it, it, it yeah, it's funny because a couple of people brought that up after the fire. It's like, yo, he was drowning, and, drowning in sweat and those, and those shorts. shorts. And it's like, yeah, these guys try to get. They want to be stylish in the ring. Dude, be fair. Win. Win the, win the fight. fucking fight. Like, why are you guys having leather shorts with rhinestones? Like, this shit is, you're, it, literally, boxing is cardio. It's fucking cardio. Like, why would you add weight to yourself? It's just the, it's just the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest fucking thing. Like, when I saw him come out, first of all, Essentials is an off-brand of Fear of God. Shout out to Jerry yes, Lorenzo. Yeah. Um those those garments are all heavy. They're all heavy. I have a shirt. It's heavy as hell. They're all heavy. Why would you like so in my head I'm like, is this an Instagram moment or you're fucking boxing? Like like you guys wanna be stylish. It's like some boxers I honestly sometimes I feel like they wanna be rappers. Like some of these guys wanna be rappers. Like look at some of their Instagrams, like they they, they really wanna be rappers. And like what happened to Getting in there, doing your job, then being whoever the fuck you want to be. Don't come in the mm-hmm. ring with that. I, I, it was funny because I never heard any of those. I never heard any of the commentators question his shorts. And I'm sitting here looking at the like, these things are absolutely soaked. And they look like joggers. And I was like, bro, that can't be good walking around with that shit on. Man, I, I know in football, I wear the lightest things ever because I'm. If I get beat for anything, I find any reason for me to say why I got beat. Oh, my socks were too heavy. Oh, my um, my gloves were didn't fit right. Oh, my pants, my tights were my tights had uh, had extra string in them. Like I find any reason to be light as possible when I'm playing a sport that needs to be dynamic and 
moving around and have agility and speed and things of that nature. So I don't get why would you like like um what's Deontay Wilder when he came in that time? Like what are you thinking? Like even the day before, I'm trying to think of all the things um in my mind to be as light as possible the next day. Like I I, I prepare that way. And the day of I have a regimen of of how to eat and, and things in that nature and how I move around and, and no sex. My wife's trying to try to hop on me. I, I, I tonight. I got a game tomorrow. I need my legs. <laughs> and I and as much as you I know, want to you know what's so crazy, Nick? As much Forever, as I want to get any, in No, but I was gonna say add to that is and all boxers know when you're coming up. The number one thing you go get first are your shoes. There's two brands that most people get, Everlast and Ringside, because they're so light. That's why people box in Everlast and Ringside shoes. They're so light. So started to see these guys come up with like and sneakers. It's like, what, what the? When I saw his shoes, I thought they were Yeezys. I thought they, they were like, like Uggs to me, bro. I said, what? <laughs> I'm like, what are they? This man is probably going to run. And bro, and Typically, you're doing like four or five miles, bro, in a fight. Well, a cardio, bro. What I are you I doing? I won't be shocked if I see a motherfucker pop out there with some motherfucking Timberlands. <laughs> Yo, because it's like, and, and a lot of it has to do with arrogance. It's like, I could wear anything and beat this guy. And my thing was, people were telling Haney's camp, hey, remember this kid came up with you. It's not like he's some joff, bro. They came up the same circuit. Yeah, this, no, yeah. bro, they literally, bro, Haney would win a tournament or Ryan would win a tournament. They the came, toughest. like, what are you doing? Their fathers the have known each other for 10 years. Like, what are you person doing? To go against, the toughest person to go against is somebody that knows you. Knows Don't you? you. Know your every move, we work out together. We did a lot of things together. We fought. We were competitive against each other. We know every move. I know what you're going to do when I do this and that. Like, we have been in a fucking circle before in a cave or in a ring, and things have got hectic. And I know I know everything you're about, about to do. So when it really comes down to it, it comes down to who's the baddest motherfucker that night because whatever tactic and skill, that's out the window, man. It's just about being a tough motherfucker that day and outlasting the motherfucker because you want to. Are you doing all the little things to do it? Like, this is why things. I think he wins the rematch and why I would love for him to. Because people forget how amazing the Pacquiao Marquez saga was and is. They fought four times. People only remember the fourth one because Marquez put him to sleep. Killed literally, him. Killed he him. literally killed him in the ring. The cr- like, Nick, you have to go look it God. up. God, dude, Marquez he knocked four. him out like Gaethje got knocked out. Like- it was bad. <laughs> but the craziest thing after that, Nick, Pacquiao goes on a run and re-energizes his career after that. He wins fight. the belt again. He wins, wins the belt again. Belt again. Bro- beat Thurman <laughs> after that. He can beat Thurman. So it's like, a part of me really enjoys this happening because people are too much of this. Undefeated crap, yo. Mayweather, Mayweather, fuck Mayweather was the only one that did it, and May people have to understand stuff. Mayweather he's, had Hame, Al Heyman, and he skated it off was danger. Scheduled well, he it was scheduled well. He skated off danger. He fought Pacquiao four years later than when he was supposed to. He didn't give Miguel Cotto a second a rematch. There was he was. Incredibly talented at scheduling, and how Heyman did it amazing. But I think social this is gonna make Haney a better freaking fighter. That's social what I think. media made it. Social media made it like that, also because they laugh at you, they pick on you. Like, damn, it's it's a sporting event. Like, I don't win all of them. The the, the real motherfuckers come back from a loss and avenge that loss and come back bigger, better, stronger, and avenge it. But the, the nowadays they make it seem like it's the worst thing to lose and. A sport like nah, it's, it might happen, dog. Somebody I, might. Have I, been. I got one. I got one final thing. Actually, the official, the referee for that fight was atrocious. Yeah. Round seven, he Garcia drops Haney, 
badly. I didn't know that he was going to get up. He gets up and he spends literally the entire round holding him, like bear hugging him. And then at one point he's being held so much and the referee can't even pull him off that Garcia cracks him and he immediately takes a point, which I thought was every boxing analyst said that was ridiculous. Should have been a, at least a warning. You, he won't let go. And you're making threat after threat after threat of the holding. For the most part in that fight, I thought Haney was the one doing almost all the holding. Garcia was doing that weird shit, turning his back and stuff. But Haney was holding nonstop. And in round seven, he held so much. I thought those next two were knockdowns too because he got hit with punches and then he kind of tumbled in the hold and fell down. And then he did it again. It's like, and you're giving this guy a break over. It was like, I don't want to say Harvey Doc was in Haney's corner, but he looked like he was in Haney's corner. And, and it, it got to be, it got to the point where it's like, bro, you're letting Haney hold every single time he gets tagged and you keep warning and warning and you're not taking a point from this guy. It, it was, it got to be too much to me watching that. And it's like the UFC when it comes to grabbing the fence and eye pokes, like if you're going to have a rule, make, you know, own the rule, live by the rule. Cause when I, what I saw in that fight, especially in the second half of that fight was a hug fest from Haney. He was, he wasn't throwing. he, was a, he he has he didn't have the power to scare Garcia to me at at a certain point it was like Garcia was laughing it off, um, and that last knockout knockdown in the eleventh I thought Haney I mean you see his eyes it was like I couldn't believe he got up, and I, and I'm impressed by that in itself but I also don't want this kid to get badly hurt you know he's 25 years old you know God forbid you like you let these fights sometimes these fights go on too long where you see a guy roll like that like he was he was busted. Busted the fuck up. I don't want to see the fight at 140. Garcia can't make 140. I want to see it at 147 if they want to do it again. I don't think Garcia can make 140. You know, but I shit, wherever it's at, I'll watch it again for sure. Yeah. So that's it for us guys with Combat Corner. I know this was shocking to you know hear Donald come. That was awesome. Screaming, but I just I have to get those things off my chest. I um boxing is I love boxing the way Nick loves football. Um, I did it for so much of my life. It, it, it brought a lot of joy to me. It kept me out of trouble. And I just really love the sport. I would love to get Max Kellerman on Call Back Corner one, one, one day so we can discuss boxing with him. And I heard my man Damian Lillard loves boxing as well. All you boxing aficionados, you guys need to go to Call Back Corner and we could, you know, discuss some things. Um, that being said, where are we guys now, man? We the show's been flowing. D, it's the uh, Dion segment oh, that I want to hit. Uh, <laughs> let me let me exit left while Rudy goes on his uh, Dion. It, it, it it's not a rant. It, it's not a rant. This is more of a. a, a, a it's gonna be a rant. I gave Dion credit on one, and I agree with him. But I also have a problem with Dion. Um. <sighs> The, the 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 spring transfer portal. You're the head coach. He lost 21 players since April 15. 21, Nick. 21. And his response to and he's and in in that time they've gained four. What do you think? This guy says in multiple podcasts and whatever he's been on in the same commentary about Cormani McLean, how I wish he could have really got a chance to coach him. I think it comes a certain point where a head coach needs to learn to shut up. Just, just don't say anything. It, it's not beneficial because all it looks like is you're taking an app. You can't, you're taking an absolute dump on these guys. He's taking shits on these players. You know, he's, he cut all those guys last year. Fine. You did what you did. But now these guys that are transferring out are guys that transferred in last year. You built these guys up as Louis Vuitton and whatever you want. I'm bringing Louis with me. I guess that was his son and Travis and others who didn't even play because um, there was a bunch that didn't even play. And now you have... Him making comments about McLean after McLean leaves, the comment should be simply this: "We wish him the best." That's it. No, this is what Dion says. Be, study and prepare. 
Be on time for meetings. Show up to meetings. Understand the scheme. I check film time from each player so I can see who's preparing. So if I don't see that, you would be a fool to put somebody out there who's not prepared. Do you need to know that, Nick? Do I need to know that? So what you've now done publicly is you've, humili you've, you, you've humiliated that player. You've actually downgraded his value. Because if I'm a coach of another team, I may find that out regardless because of when we do our, they do their due diligence and they're, and they're investigating and they, they speak to people and all. But why are you shitting on him publicly? Why? What, what benefit do you have to take a shit on a kid that you flipped a year ago as a, as a high school senior and say that about him? No matter what he did or didn't do, you, there's no benefit for that. It, this is a this is a parent you 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 were in that parent's house, and you told that parent you would take care of that parent that 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 kid. There's other things that he said this week, and I'm reading them off my phone because I screenshotted them because it was like he was questioned by a reporter about players leaving his program, and his response was, "I wish you guys would do a little more homework when you start talking about the portal and understand what we're losing." He's lost 21 players in 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 eight in nine days. One of them is um, Savion Washington, who was a starting offensive tackle last year. One of them was Alton McCaskill, who transferred in from Houston last year and was the conference player of the year and was expected to start last year. But I think he had an injury. I think he got hurt. But his now Alton McCaskill's father has – kind of need to close his mouth too because he said, if my son's not starting, he won't be staying type of thing. And that's a problem in itself. But again, you also lost uh, Sylveon Wilkerson and Dylan Edwards. They lost their three best running backs from last season. Four actually, because one had already transferred. So you lost all your running backs and you're sitting here telling people, well, what'd we lose? We lost nothing. We're, we're not losing starters. Yeah, you, uh, there's at least seven guys in that list were start, who started last year, at least seven. That I, that I read in Colorado they're websites. They're not starting anymore. Well, clearly they're not starting anymore, but who are they backups to? Because he makes he goes out of his way to say that we bring starters in. Well, that's a fact. That's an actual lie. That's not true. Because I've looked at every guy he's brought in from this from the transfer portal in the fall and the transfer portal now. One of the guys he claims is a starter had not played a second pretty much at Texas. He's going to be a starter. Two year, he may be a starter at Colorado, but he was a non-playing backup at Texas. Did not play. And he gets two graduate-level seniors on the defensive line who combined for eight sacks, eight and a half sacks. That's what's showing up your defensive line? Yeah, those guys, one guy started, the other guy was a marginal starter. But you're not replacing these guys with superstars. You're replacing them with guys that are just like the guys you're losing. Or less. Because you've lost 21 and you brought him four, okay? And I'm sure he'll fill up the class or whatever. He also says, we are good. I trust the recruiting team. I trust our coaches. Please have, please have some faith in me. You went four and eight last year, guy. Chill out. Faith in you. You went four and eight. You didn't win. You didn't win? What'd you win? Your line couldn't block me. That's why he, that's why he had to get well, his ass Well, but those are the same guys that he swore by last year. That's my problem with him. No, he he swears. That. He swore by so many of these dudes he that were. Said, he said that he had to show up some things in his own okay. life. He, he also them. swore but by those same dudes. The interior was a big thing. He Great. said that we, go. We're, he told y'all well, that he, he recruited those dudes. Because that's all go he could look. do at that moment. So he just brought in a backup fucking left, right tackle, and that's the guy that's sharing up his fucking line? A backup? It's yeah. not a starter. He's he a backup who ain't played. Is that the one from Alabama or Houston? From Texas. Texas. From Texas. His name is Peyton Kirkland. Okay. He added, when a guy when a guy's a starter and he transfers, you got to really think about that. I mean, is he really that? I don't know how many starters have really transferred around the country. I think we got some coming in for visits pretty soon. So your guys aren't starters, but the guys coming to you are starters? Man, stop it. Come on now. I know you have to manipulate a narrative to fit whatever you're trying to pull and push, but that's garbage. But we can attract those types of players. Why? To, to freezing-ass Colorado, where the, the population of the school is 99.9% .9 white? Yeah, I know. Like, look at the population of the demographic of the school. 
the demographic of the school is white. What is attractive of that school to most black kids? It's freezing cold and it's all white. What, what would attract you to that? Other than Dion himself, who's proven he's not really a good coach. As a, he's not a good coach. Yeah, he's not proven that yet. He's proven he's not the greatest of leaders because leaders of men don't do the shit he does, um, in my opinion. And he, he says, we're I making... Think, he, I think I think he's a person that you would actually like because he holds shit accountable. Who, who does he hold accountable? He doesn't hold his own kids accountable. His own kid, his own kid, a week after... No, no. I was going to say something. Well, you know what? Those are the first two you got... The first two kids that I hold accountable when I coach Little League sports of my be. kids yeah. are my kids. Yeah, of course. My kids are the first two that get held more accountable than anybody else. And his two kids, one who's a starting quarterback who out of high school was going to FAU. FAU. And he goes to Jackson State when Dion gets the job. He never went to FAU, but he committed to and signed with FAU. And then he goes to Jackson State. Let's be honest with ourselves once again. Honesty sucks when it comes to Dion. It's a it's a manipulated storyline. And then he also, but, but you don't keep your own kids accountable. You know what happened after he had that thing with the where it was the, the, the letter from the professor and talking about how his players don't behave and they act like assholes and blah 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 and whatever. And he and he videotapes everything to show how how little control he has over his program. His own son, the starting quarterback, goes to a class that he's not even enrolled in and is recording the class on Instagram Live, being recorded by somebody else, disrupting people in front of him, who've ne- some couple of white girls who've never seen him before. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, Shador is here. Woo, woo, woo. You, you have so little respect for your own father that you did exactly the opposite of what he said that same week. Like, that's ridiculous. And those two are, especially Shador, like, there's nothing that holds him accountable. So he doesn't hold anyone accountable. In fact, there's a video that was on um on Facebook where it shows, and I know this happens. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I know it happens, Nick. So he's they're blowing the whistle. The whistle's blown. And Shiloh Sanders completely lights up this guy three seconds after the whistle's blown. I thought you liked that. I thought you liked no. that. No. Wait, mm-hmm. wait. You can't be a hypocrite. You, this is your teammate, Nick. I thought you liked that one, Colorado. This is your teammate. Your teammate. You don't light up your fucking teammate three you seconds don't. after the whistle's blown. You don't light up your teammate. You don't light up your teammate and then his dad celebrates it? Like dancing around, prancing around? And I made a comment on some Facebook thing about it. And I mean, the comedy of response. And I said, and what I said was, I'm a parent of a guy going to your school. And in that situation, in one of those videos, he says, I, if you want to fight, I know you guys don't want to fight. But if you want to fight, we'll stick you in a back room and close the door and drop the blinds and see who comes out. I'm a parent of a player. If something happens to my guy, my son, because of your fucking complete lack of professionalism and sense, bro, you got some shit to answer to. Because I'll tell you right now, if that was to happen, look, we know these guys don't really want to fight. We know this. But if he was to actually do that and someone got badly hurt, he's responsible. I and think he should be arrested for it's it. More, it's more of because he said it. But I think, Rudy, I think you like that type of shit. That's I, no, I don't want to see my players fighting in the in the in a back room and someone getting knocked out and hurt badly. No, I don't want to see it. No, I want to see the like fight. It. I want to see the fake little fight with the helmet on where no one really gets hit. Okay. If you're a All dumb right. fuck and want to punch a face mask, that's on you. But I'm not going to see my players and put my kids in a situation where they're going to beat each other's asses and no, now but- neither kid can play. You're right. So because because let me tell you something. What if it was Shador? When it comes to that, because I'm sure there's some players on that team that don't like Shador very much and want to punch him in his fucking mouth on their own team. When it comes to fighting on the team, whatever happens on the field happens on the field. That's it. It don't go beyond the field. Once it go to the locker room, that shit that shit's cut out. That's when it's a fucking problem. Everything that happens on the field, it leaves it on the fucking field. Whatever problem you have, that's it. After that, y'all getting back in the locker room and y'all fucking friends. Y'all find a way to make it work. On the field, your competitive shit happens. But when you get into the locker room, man, that's how you build a team. That's how you build chemistry and things in that nature. Why is Jordan? Why is Jordan Poole no longer with the fucking Golden State Warriors? 
do. Draymond Green well, punches well, him in the face when he's not looking like a punk, and it's videotaped and it's leaked, and everyone sees it. And Jordan Poole can never play with that. He can't play with that dude no more. Because I'm sorry, what you did was punk. You you you, you cheap shot at me. I wasn't looking. At least if I'm looking and we can square up, we can well, fight. Well, but you probably still lose that fight. If, but if somebody walk up on you and, and y'all are, had already had a disagreement, you, 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 you better get your 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 your, your multi millionaire yeah. athletes behave. Uh, Rudy, you, because I'm a fucking man is a man. And when well, married, you know what? Draymond Green's not a man because Draymond Green's a cheap shot artist, and he does it to everybody. I'm just saying, but when he does it everybody? When she get tense, you got to get ready. Well, that's why Draymond might be gone next year because he should he, be gone. But he should be gone. And now, finally, Dion says, because, "Finally, Dion says we're different from a multitude of different teams, and you can't say what's good or what's bad. I know what works for us and what has worked for us tremendously." We pattern things like the NFL. The NFL only has several draft choices and a 53-man roster. We go about it from a free agency standpoint. Brother, go coach the NFL. My guy, go coach the NFL. Go coach the NFL. If that's how you operate, go coach the NFL. Because that's not what you're there. You're in a college. Well, what if he trying you're to in a university. A it's not a fucking, it's not a goddamn, it's not a damn, what you would call it, a, a trade school. What if he's trying, he trying to get him prepared for real life in the NFL? Prepared for... That's not what he said, though. That's not what he said. And he keeps saying this dumb shit and sh shitting on guys that were on his team that he begged to come play for him last year. And he looks like a fucking clown. He looks like a clown. Now, I agree with the shit with McLean. McLean is a, was a problem. But you don't have to reveal every dark secret of your program to the world, and you do it to embarrass these guys. What? That's it's embarrassing. They, that's how they program works, man. It's a that's he works. Because I'll tell you right now, tremendously worked. Motherfucker, you were four and eight. You were four and eight. You lost seven of your eight of your last nine. You got beaten by bad teams. I'm done. I'm trying to defend it to this turn the point. There's nothing to defend, Nick. You know goddamn well that if you sent your kid to some fucking college, when you send your son Nico to go to college, and if he's a football player, and your coach, if that coach was to do some shit like that, go in the back room and have a fist fight, and your fucking kid calls you that day and says, Dad, I got my nose broken because coach sent me to the back room to have a fist fight, you're probably going to be at that school within an hour, wherever, the, or if it's within flying distance within that same day. And don't tell me you won't. Because it could affect that kid, your son's career. Did you just see the huge, I think it was in Kentucky. They showed a video of two linemen getting into a bad fist fight earlier this year in the spring. And everything's recorded now. And the one guy got completely knocked out. How can you play with that dude again? Like, I'm looking to hit you with a, get you with a bat. Got to take that L. <laughs> hold that L. Not you already know how guys deal with L's. Because you know what? You know how that goes nowadays. These guys don't deal with L's. Welcome back, Disney. That being said, yeah, we're at the end of our show. This has been one of the most entertaining shows we've had in a while now. Um, super excited. Uh, the content is going to be pretty freaking amazing on this one. Um, close, closing out, guys. In the two-hour mark, guys, any thoughts that you guys have? I'll start. I'll start, Nick. I, I saw you. I saw you were ready. I saw you were ready. Uh, let me let me get something out. Listen here. Um, I want to. I want to speak. No, hold on. Give me. Give me one second. Um, give me one. Give me one second. I, I want to get his name correct. Uh, listen here, Ziggy, Ziggy Wolf. He's the owner of the Minnesota Vikings. Hear me clearly. Hear me fucking clearly. Don't let me down tomorrow, man. Don't. Don't do it. Don't do it, man. Because if I hear what the numbers are big, J.J. McCarthy, I'm, I'm changing teams. I will, I'm going to flip a coin and, but, and just find a team. I'm not going to jump on a Pat, Patty Mahomes bandwagon. I'm not going to do that. But, yo, the Detroit Lions colors look great on my skin. You hear me? Detroit Lions colors look great on my skin. Arizona Cardinals, I heard, is great in Phoenix. I'll love to visit. You hear me? So Ziggy, don't play with me. That's all I got to say. It's up on, on you guys. 
And with the third pick of trading up all their draft picks to get, you know, the Minnesota Vikings select J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan. Christian Ponder 2.0. I got nothing. Is that it? Is, is that it, Nick? I got one. I got two quick things. First off, Nick, you fucked me. You convinced me about Kobe White and who won the most improved player. Tyrese Maxey, as I said initially. Um, yeah. And then finally, I got to be, be a big – I know we don't talk about it here because we really don't have the knowledge. I, I watch it because I, I think it's the coolest – I think it's the best playoff that exists. It's, it's, it's hockey. NHL hockey play, – playoff hockey is the best playoff there is. The speed of that game and watching those guys – I mean, you can't even blink. You sit down. You take a piss. It is – there's a goal. It, it is just so damn fast and it's so intense. And watching the Panthers, the Florida Panthers are now up 2-0 on the Tampa Bay Lightning. They play tomorrow night, Thursday, um, in Tampa. They won last night in overtime, 3-2. Sergey Bobrovsky or whatever. Man, he made some ridiculous saves. The the goalie for Tampa made some insane saves. Uh, I mean, man, I, I we got a Stanley Cup contender down here. I would love to have a cup parade. That would be so dope. Where would they do it in Fort Lauderdale or Miami? I have no for, idea. No, Fort Lauderdale. But, yeah. Big ups to the big ups to the Florida Panthers. Uh, I'm I'm so excited. We went we made it to the Stanley Cup last year. They have a really good shot. I mean, it's a hell of a freaking team. And yeah. it, it's also the coldest arena there is because I think if they don't have it that cold, it would, the ice would melt. But uh yeah, I just want to give a shout out to the Panthers because no. that's no. all. You know what? I do got a shout out to them. I got a shout out, Tyler Hero. You know, I was coming on here ready to bash him. You know, I was about to say Celtics, they didn't have to worry about cutting off the, the head of a snake of a King Cobra because Jimmy Butler was up. I was about to call Tyler Hero a water moccasin. And I was going to say that they don't even have to cut his head off because even if it bites you, it's not even poisonous. And then I was going to say that the Celtics, they're throwing so much D at Tyler Hero. You know, they're throwing big D energy at him. So much defenders that they could throw at him. No Diddy. What was no that? No Diddy. So much, so much D is getting thrown at him that it sometimes could be overwhelming from the number of defenders that they could oh, throw yeah. at him. They have a lot of great defenders. You know, you got Jalen Brown, you have White, you have Drew Holiday. And it's just sometimes... All that D could be overwhelming and you can't take it sometimes. But today, no homo. Pause. I mean, no Diddy. Uh, no pause. What is with this no Diddy bullshit? Like, y'all gotta stop this crap. Like, this is becoming so silly. I don't understand it. So, Everything's paused now, even on TV now. Like, no, what are we no, doing? So, I really wanted to give a shout out to, her, to Tyler Hero coming out tonight, balling 14 assists. I, but, thought, but, we had, I thought we had no chance. Um, and I was going to call him a water moccasin, but he really showed up like a king. Like Nick, a Nick, 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 water moccasins are poisonous. Huh? Water moccasins are poisonous. They are? <laughs> yes, they're, co- they're called cotton mouths, bro. Which one, which one isn't poisonous? Which- oh, no, I'm not a snake expert. Oh, the grass snake. The, grass the, 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 garden sta- the garden snake is not poisonous. That's what I meant to call him, a garden snake. <laughs> but, but he showed up today. And he balled out. Man. We were gonna have a freaking zoologist come on here and say, "You freaking clowns are calling water moccasins non-poisonous snakes." I'm sorry about that. You know, he's he's a he was a garden snake. That's what I meant. My <laughs> boy. But he showed up and he balled out, man. Oh, shout out to Tyler Hero, man. Um, we no, got he played one, great tonight. He played great tonight. We got one game, man, and I think we. I didn't think we were gonna get any. We could get one. Spolster for they were team. thirty. They were thirty-seven and four at home, thirty-eight and four after game one of the playoffs. But That's you know a what? monster I mean, win. The crazy part about it, I had a feeling that the Celtics would have one game they don't give us, and they did. So I, shout out to Tyler, man. From I, zero to hero, I, I legit think the Celtics could win every game against everybody else and sweep the other series. But us, it's just something. Except about us, it. I think that if we could legitimately go twelve and one in the in the East, and the one loss is to us. From from zero to hero, baby. Zero to hero. That being said, guys, we're gonna uh, get off this episode. Rudy, let them know where they can find us. 
Thank you, everybody. Again, get us to 500 subs on YouTube. We are at 463 right now, and um, we're crushing it on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, TikTok at Come On Now Podcast, and on X Twitter. I don't know why people say Twitter still, but it's X or whatever. What? Come On Now Pod, and uh, keep supporting. We appreciate you so very much. And like we right, said guys. before, man, we like to converse with y'all, man. Educated conversations and things of that nature. And we'll go back and forth all the time, man. We we enjoy that shit, man. Just keep coming. We'll we'll respond back out of me or Rudy. And, and man, we like we generally love it and have fun with it, man. The other people that come with the bullshit, sucker. I'm not gonna say what Rudy would say. <laughs> We're gonna you can say what you can say what Ryan Garcia would say, and then say thank you, God. <laughs> Suck a dick. Thank you, God. (laughs) Come on now. Peace, guys. We're out of here. We're out of here.